Oh, um, so in this, we wanted to just um, analyze um, a particular setup. We wanted to model a CV, which is uh, SQL injection in the Vitro project, Vivo Vitro project. So um, let's get started for for writing a one uh, for writing query we will just create a project which is like I'm just writing a test one or QL. So we are we're gonna write one uh, you know uh, a query to basically model specific CV. So for before that just wanted to import uh, the standard library which comes with the code QL. So now uh, in this scenario uh, this project is actually affected uh, by physical injection which uh, where uh, there's, there's a particular function which is spark uh, ask query which basically takes direct user input and uh, when it is applied um, it doesn't perform any kind of check so in general like uh, SQL injection occurs when uh, the user applied input is being directly been taken and treated as a part of the query due to which user is able to manipulate uh, the query and modify the query and then um, finally when it get executed uh, it finally uh, gives up you know user related or let's say attacker uh, modified uh, output so basically leads to SQL injection when you're not uh, forming enough checks on the user's blind input and directly being running uh, that data as a part of the query so what we're gonna do we will be modeling uh, particular func particular uh, checks uh, the functions uh, before getting started so we know that uh, the vulnerable function is spark ql ask query so now the thing is uh, we want to do just first attempt what we want to find we will be identifying the sync where the actually user supply data is going so what we are doing is here we are finding such instances where spark ql uh, this function is getting caught so let's try to write uh, the query to basically first get all the places or the instance where this function is getting uh, or from where the function is getting caught so i will be declaring uh, a variable you can declare uh, uh, using from clause and um, a as a short and method so what we are doing here is we are defining uh, a type, a variable type, which is method access, which basically gives us access to a function, which is called um, using a, a set of arguments. And this method basically allows, uh, this variable of type method basically allows us to um, access the properties of the function. Um, for example, if you want to access the name of the function, you can use a get name property, uh, you know, function to basically get the name of that uh, function if you want to get the number of arguments you can take this as a reference and then call certain other functions to get the data so this pretty much helps us identifying uh, the you know the calls uh, for which or from where the sparkle uh, this function is getting called so that's a write up one condition where we wanted to where clause is used to basically define condition in code code where you wanted to find or define a particular set of uh, condition to basically match it up uh, uh, to a particular scenario. So what we are doing is we are, we are writing a where uh, condition where we are checking, okay, the method which we wanted to know about is, uh, uh, is of the name, which is uh, this name. Let's write the same. So what it is doing is basically it will be fetching the first using this method, uh, you know, variable. We will be getting the name. We will calling a function which is uh, get the name. Then it will call match function which is like a predicate to match with a particular string. And since this matches with our function, also we want to make sure that the method which is getting called is our method. So we will be using method access to get particular method which is getting called and since we have already obtained the instance uh, of our function we will type method and uh, select so what we are doing here is we are ensuring that the method which is being um, basically which is being called which is using ma.get method as 
uh, m, which is instance which we obtained from here, where the uh, method name is Spark SQL query. So this basic check will give us uh, the output from where uh, this method is being getting called, or where all the instances where this method is being uh, called from. And finally, we will be using select. Basically, select being used to show the output of the query. So you can write m and ma. So what does it mean is basically we want both method which is uh, and as well as the method access uh, basically the call uh, in the output window um, as the output of this query. So let's run this query and check it is compiling and should give us yeah. So it gave us 15 results basically showing up okay this was the method which was called and this was actually the call with an argument. So let's say if you check the first uh, call we see that okay um, this is called using query string and let's see certain other uh, results so this is the one particular case where user specific input uh, if we see this individual string individual URL is getting uh, to no triple for function and then basically is being fed to uh, this particular spark ql ask query function and it's being concatenated so it means basically it gives us uh, the attacker to basically manipulate uh, the query it's just a standard uh, sql injection but for this uh, we can call it as spark ql query injection uh, which is specific to this uh, project so we are specifically like we are interested in to model uh, this specific uh, instances where the user supplied input is can is taken as a string and as well as it is being concatenated. So let's see other results as well. So again, so these all instances will tell, okay, this was a call to this particular function and with particular argument. Let's try to more make it more precise. So what we're going to do is we will define a particular, uh, let's define a method or we can say predicate to check whether the uh, the supplied input is actually a string and is concatenated like it's a con being concatenated before a uh, string yeah it's being concatenated before uh, while while uh, used in this particular method so uh, we have defined a predicate now the thing is the method in a method call whatever the arguments which have been passed are treated as or you can say taken as an expression uh, in code queue, uh, code queue define them as an expression. Uh, so whatever the value it is there, which is supplied to this particular function, uh, is of an expression uh, type. So what we will do is we will be um, we are interested in particularly cases where uh, the the uh, let's say the second one where the user supplied input is actually of string. And that is formed using a catenation. So there's a plus operator as well. So we will be using add expression as uh, you know uh, as an input because add expression basically tells up okay uh, binary expression using the plus operator. Basically, it helps us to refer, uh, refer certain cases where the plus operator is being used. And uh, later on, we can use this argument type and check that whether this argument is also we will get the type of this argument using get type function and then also check whether it's, it's the, an instance of uh, of a particular uh, let's say uh, class which is of type string so what it does is basically checks whether the uh, supplied argument is actually of type string is actually uh, uh, an expression which is uh, using uh, which is in form using plus operator as well as of type string and we want to put that check here as well because we are right now matching up okay what is the method call uh, list near uh, list the number of methods uh, the wherever the instance of sparkle query is now we also want to add an and uh, case which will check uh, okay Along with this, all these checks just also ensure that the, the argument is of particular uh, type. So to access the argument of a particular method, uh, since we have already referencing that method using uh, you know method access, so method access also gives us uh, you know allows us to basically access the argument of a method which is been getting called. So we'll use 
method access as a instance uh, reference and then we can get the argument of the function which is getting called so we can do this using get argument predicate so once you do it you need to supply an index the index of which argument you want it could be possible like okay this function is called with one or two arguments but in this case if you see uh, the case two it is the first argument like you can get the zeroth argument so we define a zero so that's pretty much i think let's run this query and see the output of the result yeah let's see the output so it specifically models a one case where if we see this is the call this is the final call where uh, we're able to model and find okay this is a specific case where user supply input is actually being concatenated and is of a type string so yeah that's uh, pretty much i think we can get more uh, uh, results if we do a specific pattern match so this will uh, list us all the other inst similar instances so it should give us some other cases yeah so in this time we got two uh, output and two results now let's check this one this is also of a similar type but where we in the middle uh, whatever it is it doesn't matter but it is also performing the similar type of action so these two instances which we got uh, are affected so this um, using which is this uh, logic we are able to basically find other instances of these uh, similar uh, vulnerability so yeah so that's pretty much for uh, the sql injection um, scenario later on we can um, exactly model up uh, certain cases because this doesn't completely covers up uh, all the cases where uh, you know there could be possibly possibilities where the the argument which is using pass is not directly passed as a string or being concatenated. It could be like uh, before passing even to the function, we are doing a concatenation beforehand. Um, so if we, I think that will be that will be solved using uh, the data flow, uh, the way data flow is from source to the sink. So by that way, you will get more uh, more instances and more accurate results. So for now, I think that's that's it. Thanks.